above the window. You see there's a long narrow opening they have to close up at the moment to try and stop birds from going in. And then the wider one in the grill on the right. They've got to do with ventilation and with disease control. So just remember that when we get in, I'll show you exactly how they work. Okay, it's a very clever piece of engineering. Remember at all times that the guy who designed all of these workhouses was 24 years of age when he came here. Uh, the guy called George Wilkinson, second George in the story. He was 24 when he came here from a family of Those of you who are wearing any kind of dark tops or indeed any tops at all, just make sure you try not to hit off the walls and you'll get the ball um, dirty on your stomach. landlord had to pay a tax for each person here, a land tax. But it suited him to get unproductive tenants off his land, ah. pay the small tax here, per head, and then put cattle on his land. Cattle were worth more to the landlord than unproductive tenants. <laughs> Just think of that. Still the same. <laughs> Maybe. Anyway, are we all in? Uh, right. Uh, Come on ahead. They're going to keep walking. Keep coming in. Try what stay I want in the to say to you is that where you are now was the matron's office. And when I say a matron, today it conjures up images of highly qualified nurse in a hospital situation, etc. In those days, we're talking just about a strong woman who was able to keep control because we're talking back to the 1890s and beforehand, the 1840s, 1850s, when medicines as we know them today really didn't exist. Mm. If somebody got a cold, a flu, or a sniffle, you kind of kept them hydrated. And if that worked, okay. If it didn't, the chances are they died anyway. So, what I want to find out is a woman who had a strong, strong personality, who could keep control. And in this case here in Portumna, at one time, the workhouse master and the workhouse matron were husband and wife. But, Things mustn't have been going too good between them because he was living over there and she was living here. <laughs> this was her office and that was her bedroom. You can see for want of a better word she had the trappings of luxury and that there's a bit of colour on the wall. But one of the things in the fire and the timber floor, but just keep an eye, she had that control over the women. That was the women's yard, this was the girls' yard. Remember I told you they were separated. Mm -hmm most likely never to see each other again. Children under two could have stayed with their mother. But up to two, after two, if you were a girl, over here, and a boy over on the other side. Anyway, at two years of age, if you're taken from your mother, and the chances are within a couple of weeks, they've forgotten what she even looked like. Probably have forgotten the fact that you had a mother at all. That's the cruelty and the hard reality. But in case that they would ever get a chance to see each other, sorry. Here again, the cruelty is built into the design. And the same on that side. She can pull the shutters 
so that she has a good look and maybe a couch at one side and do the same at the other so they won't be able to see each other again. It's just, you know, it's, it's the hard cruelty with which these places were run. It was a form of control. As I said, they were run almost on the same principle as a prison, except your only crime is being poor, being destitute, and not able to pay your rent. <laughs> and probably, if you weren't able to pay your rent, the chances are you were already evicted because they send in bailiffs and then the old policemen mm. and maybe the military and out you go. And what they do is the little bohan or cabin that you be lived in, it would be just maybe a mud hut with a thatched roof or maybe a bit of stone with a thatched roof, an open fireplace and that's about all. Chances are that would be just flattened in case anybody else would go into it or in case during the fire you might see go back in and try and sleep in it. Your only hope of actually surviving was to come in here. Now all of you look uh, reasonably fit, no more than myself, although I don't feel fit all the time, to walk 20 or 30 miles in your present state to here. You probably do it okay. Can you imagine trying to walk 20 or 30 miles, maybe in winter time, maybe freezing conditions, and carry maybe a child with you who has no shoes, and you try and do that with an empty stomach, and maybe for weeks before that, the stomach has been empty, mm -hmm. and those along the route are afraid to help you, because if they're seen to help you, and you've already been evicted, whew, out they go as well, they're evicted as well. That's the harsh reality of the system. So, luckily, if you made it here alive, okay, conditions were bad, but there was a hope of staying alive. Right? Mm -hmm. This of the where there's one, two, three, four, same on top, women's dormitories. In other words, where the women over eighteen, over sixteen would have slept. And okay, first thing kids would say, Oh, this is where the beds were. Uh uh. These are the beds. Just a sleeping platform. They're basically a duke bag packed with straw. That's your bed. When you came in here, you always have to, to, to keep this term in your head. It's, people refer to them as poor houses. They were. But the more correct term is work out. When you came in here, you walk for your bite to eat, a place to lie down, and the uniform that you were given to wear. Right? Probably, it's like, it's almost today like a modern cattle case, head, tail, head, tail. In this case, it was head, feet, head, feet, and this channel in the middle. And basically, the closer together what would you be, the warmer you may be. I showed you outside the different openings in the wall. Because of the fact that there were so many people together, there were two ways of preventing disease from breaking out, colds, flus, sniffles, and indeed even anything worse. One, these holes outside in the wall, if you look along there, if you're metric, about every 20 centimeters, if you're imperial, about every foot part, there's a little half inch hole. Yes. Right through the whole way from top to bottom. In the, lock, in the outside, the long narrow opening, cold air, winter and summer, came in through there. Right? came in and came in through all of those holes here. So, that cold air was fresh air. It came in and as it was used, it rose up of course 
and you bring out two doors wider openings which you see outside with the grid line. A very clever piece of engineering again for its time. Also, the other way of preventing disease from breaking out, and again, a job for the men. Because remember, it was a work hour. You work, 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 work for 12 hours a day, apart from the two meals you got. Constant lime washing or whitewashing of the water. And lime has a disinfectant and a sterilizing property. So that helps to keep the air as clean as possible as well and has killed a few germs and things like that that might be hanging around. Of course, disease did break out because it had so many people together. And the other way of dealing with disease was this huge over here called the infirmary of the hospital wing. And that idea is that it was away from the five main living blocks of that age, the two, the two bars, which was the women's, the girls, the men's, the boys, and that central bar, the kitchen, the dining room, and the chapel. And you got them isolated and over to that hospital wing. But again, there, you got a bed, and they finally kept you maybe hydrated with a few hot drinks or whatever. There would have been no medicine for talking about as we know them today. There was always a doctor on call. The job the doctor needed was not to heal anybody, it was to certify death. The doctor had to certify death. Probably even in some workhouses, I doubt if that was even in forced all the time because deaths were so numerous. Mm that there are stories, particularly in La Prairie, and the show of people just being wheeled out and presumed dead on carts, and just buried in mass pits in a hurry. Uh, did they uh, did they line them like they did in Kilmainland? They would have been lined in the bigger ones in the in the mass pits simply to, again to kind of control disease. Filled in the hole, and that was, of course, a job for the men. Here in Portumna, as far as we can ascertain, nobody is actually buried on the grounds of the workhouse. They are buried in Calvary Cemetery, just across from Alhazen's Volkswagen garage here. But that caused a little problem. In that, people began to kind of eventually get a little bit up themselves when the system disappeared. And I'm not going out to be buried. That's the proper graveyard. I'm not going out there. It wasn't until 1919 that there was a Father John Carford in the parish priest here in Bertumna. And normally the parish priest is buried in the church ground. But he will specifically, in his will, that he would be buried in Calvary Cemetery, it was, it is, and there's a monument there, and that restored kind of an aura of respectability back to uh, the graveyard there. Now another problem arose in other centres, in that for instance in Loch Ray, and what happened in a lot of cases was that these workhouses and the infirmary in particular, when eventually the system closed down, they were turned into geriatric nursing homes. Fine geriatric nursing homes known as county homes, the original kind of geriatric nursing home and such, proper nursing care, everything, but <laughs> up to I would imagine about the 1960s, you tell an old woman, for instance, who maybe lived through some of this period, that she would have to go to the county home if she was getting a little bit on in years, maybe had nobody to mind her or whatever, or particularly if she was trying to get a little bit of what they now know as humility, that time they kind of, yeah, she's losing an average, you know, type of thing, or she's just losing it. 
I tell you one thing, you want to be telling us that more good things in fact. Because for us it was there was no way of putting me into the workhouse. And they still refer to it as the workhouse. Mm -hmm. The institution is absolutely hated. Mm -hmm. If you went that way, chances are you went to the next world. And that was the end of that. But eventually, remember at all times, the clever landlord was thinking, thinking, thinking. He didn't like paying this land tax. So there were two other ways that you left the workhouse. Forms of assisted immigration. One for men. Good timber. It's all Canadians, it's fine. Coming in from Canada on ships. Ship going out empty. Far away. Landlord thinks, uh uh, hang on a second. I send these guys back to Canada. Would you have your time in the Canada Pass? Would this be called? Oh, that's right. 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 That's
Nixon, Reagan, Clinton or Obama. Even though Barack Obama was elected in 25 miles out the road here, 25 minutes drive out the road here in a place called Shinron. Mm. Henry Healy is his eighth cousin, we call him Henry the Eighth. <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes, do you know how many people died here? Here? In this building. I don't know the exact figure, but quite a lot did. Mm. Quite a lot did. Because it kept great records, didn't it? No, yes, the problem with the records for Portumna. Uh, the records for Portumna are one of the few records that are missing off the face uh, of the earth. Uh, There's two possible reasons for that. Either they're in somebody's attic <laughs> and nobody <laughs> knows they're there, or another thing, somebody may have had somebody mm. in their family line and decided, Jesus, get rid of him, I don't want to ever know that anybody but I'm to was in the workout. Mm. And they could have actually destroyed it. Mm. So the, the matron and those in control, were they British or Irish or? Uh, they or would they? have been well, they sure. would have been appointed by the British and by the Board of Guards and they probably would be Irish. Mm -hmm. well. You see you needed very few formal yeah, staff. <laughs> because of the fact that it was a workhouse, the work was done from inside the workhouse itself. They had a workhouse master, a workhouse matron, a clerk, a porter. Um, a teacher for the boys, a teacher for the girls, you had a doctor on call, and you had two chaplains, one a Protestant minister and one a Catholic priest. Mm -hmm. Because believe it or not, when I started here first as a guide, I was thinking, Jesus, no, the idea of a Protestant talk was that couldn't possibly work. And it was. And in a lot of cases I found that there were old policemen and soldiers who kind of were almost thrown into scrap heaps when they came to the end of their service. Mm. They were no longer of use to anybody. In a lot of cases, they didn't marry. In a lot of cases, if they did, the wife was probably long gone, or dead maybe. And a lot of them took to drink and things like that, and winded up almost on what you kind of call the scrap heap of life. A lot of people who worked in these places died in them, from the diseases. They would have. They did. They I know that. Have. They did. Yeah. They would have. Doctors yeah. and nurses and everybody. Uh, they would because even the doctors and nurses wouldn't have had mm. medication or things like that. There was no medication. But is there any record of anybody actually up and leaving on their own free will out of here? <laughs> you see, <laughs> you could. You were free to leave at any time. But what were you going to leave from? Mm. Certain death. You were going out. You see, the idea of these here was to keep the body alive, but not the spirit. Mm. And I'll tell you now, somebody asked me earlier on, who asked me about the diet? What the diet was? Right. <laughs> Adults got two meals per day. You got eight ounces of stirabout and a pint of milk in the morning. Stirabout. Does anybody like porridge? It's porridge, yeah. Porridge. Milk, or I'm talking about, sorry, water and meal boiled in big uh, pots, cast iron pots, and so thin a consistency you didn't even need a spoon and a plate, you just put your mug in and you drank your two mugs with a, about a half pint each, two mugs with a pint. That was for the men. And that's what you had to work on for the day. Except in the evening, they got three and a half pounds of potatoes boiled for your dinner and a pint of skimmed milk. No meat, no veg, no protein, no vitamins, no nothing. Just enough to keep the body alive, but not the spirit. Right? You got three and a half pounds of potatoes is quite a lot of potatoes. Just popped out, no need for plates, just pop them out, boiled on in jackets on the table, you peel them, you eat them, and you drink your milk. 
One of the punishments I saw written in the rule book was that if you kind of misbehaved, you might have just said, I, I won't, or you might have been talking out of turn or whatever. You could have to have those three and a half pounds of potatoes without the finding it. Can you imagine trying to eat those dry? In here is telling you, for God's sake, feed me. And in here is telling you, there's no way I can swim up this. No butter, no seasoning, no nothing. Right? It's hard to imagine it, but that's it. One thing I will say to you, remember today, if I say to you, I mention um, Canada, I mention anywhere else, all you need to do if you're not on it is turn to a child of about 10 or so and they boom 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 google in the thing and they'll show you the color of the door where you're going in this that and other where you're talking about those days remember people would have been equally as frightened of going to the new world as to the next world because they wouldn't have had a clue most of them of the adults wouldn't even be able to read a map education was kind of non-existent. They wouldn't even know the map was upside down or what they They might in some cases be able to write their name. If you go back to the abstract of some of the earlier centuries, that's all that's available now the abstract of the young three months in the young there, you will see a, a, a kind of a general summary of the amount of literate people and literate people and a quite in Right. Now, how did the men take themselves? The girls. Those girls over there didn't always stay under 16. They grew up to be nice and women. Again, their diet wouldn't have been the best, but they would have been trained to be good domestics, to be good wives, good marriage material. And have any of you, I'm sure you've all heard of Earl Grey Tea. Mm -hmm. Right. Earl Grey Tea gets its name from Viscount Howard of the third Earl Grey, who was importing tea from China into ships, uh, into Britain and into Ireland. Those ships were going out empty. Four months worth sale. Ships. Steamships and trading ships. Several landlords finds out that Australia is populated by something like eight men for every one woman. So they need breeding stock in the house. They want to get away. They need women to marry. 